Hey book nerds, welcome to my channel. So to continue celebrating rereadathon, I am going to talk about my favourite books of my adulthood now. I already did one about my childhood ones, which I will link down below. It'll be the last video I uploaded before this one anyway. Um, I was going to include teenage books in this video as well, but I realised that I didn't really have enough of them that I haven't talked about in other videos anyway. I might do it at some point in the future, I might do a kind of favourite teenage books. Um, for the moment I'm literally just going to talk about my favourite books now, as of me filming this, in the whole world, out of all the books that I've read. So there's not going to be many of them, I think there's only four. I am very selective about this list, I love many books but I give five stars very rarely and it takes a lot for me to consider a book one of my favourites. So yeah, I'm just going to start launching into them. You may also notice there's not really a common theme with any of these books. So the first one to get it out of the way will surprise pretty much no one who's ever spoken to me and that is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is my favourite book of all time, this tops the list. Maybe I should have finished with it but I talked about it before anyway so you know. Um, this is a fantastic mis um, murder mystery book written by the best murder mystery author that ever lived in my opinion. It is about 10 people who accept an invitation to go to this island for a dinner party. When they are there they realise that none of them know who they've been invited by and a storm means that they are now cut off from civilization. There is a poem um, which has gone through several revisions because it used to be it had one problematic title and then it got changed to another problematic title. It's called Ten Little Soldier Boys now, I think. Um, and in this poem it's about, like, it's a childhood poem just about people dying, basically. And on the island, the ten people on the island start dying the way that the poem says they're going to die. And it's this fantastic, claustrophobic intense mystery story about them all panicking and trying to work out who's killing all of them and there's also reasons that they're out there on the island which I'm not going to go into any more detail about that but it's fantastic if you in fact I would just recommend this flat out to anyone because it's not a very long book worst comes to worst you don't like it in which case you know that you probably won't like any of Agatha Christie's work. This is very different from her other work, I will say that, because there's no detective character. There's no Poirot or Miss Marple solving the case. Um, and it is what I consider her best work, obviously, because it's my favourite. But it is also considered her masterpiece. So it's not necessarily the best one to start with with her writing, but if you're never going to read any of her books anyway, then I would recommend reading this one because it's my favourite book in the world and I just want everyone to enjoy it really. <laughs> the next book I'm not sure if I have actually talked about before on my channel and that is Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill. This is the most heartbreaking book I've ever read. It is about a dystopian world where women are designed. So they're called Eves and Basically they are raised at this school until the age of, I think it might be 16, either 16 or 18. And then they have one of three career paths they can choose. They can either get married to one of the eligible sons of the men who essentially run this universe. Um, there's a limited number of these sons and they go on they come and hang out with all the girls periodically throughout the year so there's this massive competition to try and seduce one of them and get him to pick you to marry him um, in which case you become his wife that's not the word they use I can't remember what word they use but there is a word for it um, but you're basically his slave until you turn the age of 30 and then you will be killed and that is your entire life the second option is to become a prostitute essentially um yeah that's that's like the second best option and the third option is to become a chastity and this is basically you get to live forever 
which is bad because you age and in this universe they are so conditioned to be beautiful that that's like the worst fate for them is growing old and they have to live at the school and raise the next generation and the next generation and they're basically alone forever um so it's this story it's this really intense story about the main girl Frida who is in this school and then she's trying to win the love of one of the sons and there's like a whole competitive female thing going on there's basically like a bitchy high school book but with this horrible dystopian element and it's really really feminist you get the the way the story is told is fantastic there are things at first that might annoy you with the writing style because the women are raised to be childlike so they have slang words for a lot of things um but once you realise what it's doing, I, it didn't bother me anyway because it was like part of the world building. The world building in this is fantastic because it's done so subtly and it's done the way that it really should be where the main character has no idea how awful this world is because she's lived in it her whole life. So um, you just get little snippets, little horrifying snippets of what this world is like and the main character isn't reacting to them because that's how she's lived her entire life but um it's honestly heartbreaking i i'm always reluctant to recommend this book to anyone because it means so much to me as a book i've read it twice now and both times i've read it i've read it in a, the space of a day i just haven't been able to put it down until i reach the ending and for me it's so emotional and brutal that it's like a real experience with this book so I don't recommend it to people because I'm aware that some people just won't like it and you have to be a particular type of person to enjoy this book so I'm not necessarily recommending it to people I would love it if you checked it out um if it sounds like your kind of thing definitely read it but be warned it's extremely powerfully emotive massive trigger warning for sexual stuff abusive stuff anything like that um obviously you need to be aware of going into this book but i just love it and i think it's fantastic i'd like to say that the next one's on a cheerier note but it is in fact misery by stephen king um this is my favorite stephen king book i love this book i've read it three times now i think this is for me perfect Stephen King because it's not too long it is a decent sized book unlike some of his doorstoppers it doesn't have tons of confusing supernatural elements and I'm not dissing Stephen King I love Stephen King but I'm not a fan of his supernatural books and the longer his books get the more bogged down in the fantastical elements I find that they get this is just a straightforward story about a famous author who has a car crash, gets rescued by this woman who turns out to be a psychopath who is his biggest fan and she holds him prisoner and he's just killed off her favourite character and she wants him to write a book where that character comes back to life and it's this fantastic, again claustrophobic um, exploration of this psychopath torturing someone that she in her own twisted way absolutely loves it is fantastic there's so many great elements to this book um, it's obviously got fantastic writing because it's Stephen King I really like the way it explores Stockholm Syndrome as well and honestly the way that Annie Wilkes who is the the psychopath in in question how she's written is just I, I love it. I know for a fact because I set this, I was part of a book club and I set this as the book club book. I know for a fact some people find her over the top and find the main character pretentious and do not enjoy the book for those reasons but for me I think it's just, I don't get any of that. I think she is perfectly written. I think the main character is a standard Stephen King protagonist. I'm not going to oversell it but yeah if you have never read Stephen King 
actually I wouldn't recommend starting with this one if you haven't read Stephen King start with the book that sounds the most interesting to you because honestly that's just the best way to go with Stephen King because his work is so varied but if you haven't read this Stephen King yet and you do like Stephen King then definitely give it a try because particularly if you enjoy if you've ever written anything or as a reader someone who loves books I feel like you'll get a lot out of it and the final book I'm going to talk about is the most recent of these for me anyway and that is Lost Boy by Christina Henry first of all I love this cover <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful um I don't know if the American covers are the same but I love these British editions they're fantastic this is a horror retelling of Peter Pan and it's told from the point of view of Jamie who is one of the Lost Boys and he's one of the he is the original Lost Boy he's the first boy that Peter Pan stole away um and took to Neverland and essentially Peter Pan is an absolute monster in this. He is the eternal child, so he takes these boys and puts them into like life-threatening situations and then doesn't care when they die and just replaces them. And it's about how Jamie's perception of him changes from him being a hero to him being a monster. And it's just fantastic. There's so this the horror in this creeps up on you subtly again but even in the early chapters you get this foreboding tone woven throughout it and it is phenomenal writing i love it so much i've read it twice now it is a really well crafted horror book it is lighter on the horror elements than christina henry's other works so i read alice by her for example and that's got a lot of really brutal stuff in it and this has as well but it's not quite as graphic um yeah it just tells a really great fantasy story with a dark edge to it and um, i love it i just love it <laughs> so yeah those are my favorite books as of this moment um do let me know if you've read any of them even if you hated them please let me know because I I can take it. I can understand why people might not like these books. Do you let me know what some of your favourite books are. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out massively. And I hope to see you next time.